All right, we're going to discuss uh, reading a file. And I'm going to do mine on BlueJ. There are two other big possibilities out there. One is you're on a uh, Mac machine. The other is you're using IntelliJ. And uh, I will briefly describe what to do in those scenarios. So let's, uh, let's start up a BlueJ. And I'm going to create a brand new project on BlueJ and call it File Project. And uh, I want you to notice when you create a new project that it tells you what directory you're in. So, for example, I am currently in my user's CSAR card directory. Uh, we're going to need that information today because we're going to need to locate the directory where the files are stored because we're going to add a, a text file to that directory. So, if Windows, I'm going to open up a Windows Explorer. I'm sure you have a similar thing on Apple, I don't know if it's called Finder or something like that. Uh, and then you just want to make yourself uh, go over to, um, I think this is where the directory where uh, my files are located. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class called, um, and this project is called the file project. So somewhere in here, there should be a file project. Here it is right here. And if I go there, you can see that this is the BlueJ stuff, and then this is the demo file, uh, the code for the demo file that I have created. And there's a readme file, which is currently not in use. We're going to create another file manually in this directory. Now, I should mention to you, if you are in IntelliJ, you want to create this file. You want to create it in the directory above the source directory. So if you're on IntelliJ, create it in the project directory. On BlueJ, you're going to create it in this directory. And if you're on Apple, you're going to have to ask one of the TAs where these files are stored. But if you find these other files, you know you've reached the right directory. We're going to create a new file here. So I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm going to say new. And I want to create a text document, which is this one right here. Now, if you're on, uh, if you're on an Apple machine, uh, you, when you create the text document, you need to change it so that it, it's not uh, rich text anymore you need to change it to be like regular text anyway i have this text document here i'm going to change the name of the file to be input and so now you see that now if i asked you the name of this file the the full name of it is actually input.txt notice i didn't write the .txt part that's just automatically created by the operating system for me because it knows that it's a tx a text file I'm going to open this file. Now, on my machine, the default editor is Notepad. You may have a different default editor, but I'm just going to create a file here. And I'm going to put the number three in here because there's going to be three additional lines I'm going to write. And I'm going to just write first line, second line, and third line. And then I'm going to do a file save, and I'm going to do a file exit. So now you can see that the file is there. If I were to open the file, you can see that everything I wrote is just in there now. Now we're going to be in here in our program, and we're going to read that file, and we're going to print it to the screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file object. So I'm going to go file f equals new file, and I'm going to tell it that it's going to be the file name input.txt. Notice I don't have to specify a path because I've created the file in the same directory where the code resides, so it knows it's the current directory where the file exists. If your file is located in some other directory, you would have to specify the full path name. I also need to do an import so that it knows where to find the file class. The next thing I'm going to do is create a scanner. I think we've used scanner in this class before. Previously, we used the scanner to read the keyboard. Today, we're going to use the scanner to read the file. So I'm going to say scanner scan equals new scanner. And I'm going to pass it the file object to read from. Now what we're going to do is if we look in this file, you see that the first line has a number in it that tells us how many more lines there are going to be that we need to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that line. The scanner also needs to be imported, by the way. So in order to read that number, I'm going to read it in as a string. I'm going to read it in as a string. So I'm going to say uh, string 
first line equals scan dot next line. And what this is, is it's going to read the first line. And now what I need to do is I need to convert that string into a number. So I'm going to say int lines equals integer dot parse int first line. And what I'm doing here is I'm converting the string three to the number three. And that's what integer dot parse int does. OK. Now it's complaining that I'm trying to read this file and it doesn't know what to do if the file's not there. After the AP exam is over, I'll show you how to deal with these errors. But right now, we're going to just pawn the whole thing off to the operating system and tell the operating system to handle any errors that occur. By I'm going to do that by going throws exception. And that basically means that the main method could throw some exception, and I expect the operating system that's running the program to handle it for me. So now if I hit compile, everything should be working. Now we're going to use a loop to read the rest of the files and print them. So I'm going to go for int i equals 0, i is less than lines, i plus plus, and I'm going to go string next line equals scan dot next line this reads the next line and then i'm going to print the line that i've read system out print ln next line if i have done everything correctly when i run this puppy you should get this on your screen